Hey guys, what's going on? This is Bunny Muffins back for set 5.5. This is going to be the patch rundown for patch 11.15. This is going to go live tomorrow on Wednesday, July 21st. We are going to have brand new champions. We are going to be removing some. We are going to be going over every single game mechanic change, including a ton of new items and the removal of some. And to kick off set 5.5, we are going to be doing a giveaway of 100 little legend eggs. So to enter that, leave a comment below and be subscribed to the channel. And I'll announce Announce the winner on July 22nd. We also have a second giveaway for another 100 eggs on my Twitter at twitter.com slash bunnymuffinslol, so be sure to check that out as well. I'll leave a link in the description below. Thanks so much to Riot Games for providing this giveaway, but well, let's get right into the changes. So first up, we have a bit of a summary of infographics here, uh, but we are going to go over everything in depth, so we will be skipping that. There are a couple of new little legends. There's an Ironclad Mold Diver, Draconic Umbra, and a Verdant Fuwa. We are also going to have order and chaos of the same guys and then we are going to have a couple of new variants of squink and that's going to be it for little legends personally i'm using dango and chonk so that's not gonna affect me too much but we also have new arenas we have the golden bakery and we have the high noon saloon i actually kind of like the name of that one so going on to the next part we have a new reckoning pass and a new reckoning plus pass this is essentially like the game pass that you get for every single set if you want to get rewards. There's a free one, but if you pay, you get even more rewards. So depending on what you like to do, that's going to be a good option for you. And it's going to come with two exclusive little legends, which are Order Pengu and Order Sprite. And here is the pricing breakdown of pretty much everything you can buy. The prices are in RP and dollars, depending if you are in the League of Legends client or if you are doing it on mobile. Now onto what we actually came here for, Rise of the Sentinels. The Sentinels have been struggling in their fight against Viego. Those low players can't handle the Black Mist without us, so it's time to recruit players with a pension for tactics. Teamfight tactics. Starting this patch, there will be an infinite repeating mission that awards Sentinel points for playing games, including games of TFT, and you don't even have to run the Sentinel trait. Since we are doing this mid-set event, the missions are hidden, but the faster rate of progress should immediately be noticeable. So you essentially just need to play one game and earn 600 Rise of Sentinel points, and the mission can be repeated infinitely. And this will, I assume, give some loot in-game. And then for ranks, Grandmaster and Challenger ranked, let the race of heroes begin. Just like the Festival of Beasts, Grandmaster and Challenger are unlocked immediately, allowing for the true zero to hero competition. Grandmaster and Challenger are still limited to the top accounts on each server, but players must have at least 200 LP in Masters to reach Grandmaster, and at least 500 LP in Grandmaster to reach Challenger. Good luck getting your name placed right under mine. So essentially there's going to be a ranked reset. I believe it's a soft reset since it's a mid-set update, uh, so you can essentially be the first person to get to Master, or Grandmaster, or Challenger. So yeah, your rank has been soft reset down one tier in your current standings. For example, if you are currently gold 2, you will now be silver 2. If you are very good at this game and place in Master or above, you will be reset to Diamond 4. And you will get 5 provisional matches after the reset, meaning you will not lose LP for sub top 4 placements in your first 5 ranked games of the new stage. And you'll also gain a lot of bonus LP for finishing top 4. Rank rewards will be distributed in patch 11.16 for everyone who made it to gold or higher in the last set. We also have hyper roll tier rewards with emotes and hyper roll tiers will not be reset and then these rewards will also be coming in patch 11.16. Alright so now onto the game changes we have new mechanics. You guys can check out this article here for in-depth details on that or check out my video that I did on set 5.5 but essentially radiant items are the new items we are deleting all the old shadow items but radiant items work a little different before shadow items were kind of just like normal items but now radiant items they only come once per game and they are more powerful versions of the regular items that you should use to kind of choose your win condition with and you can only get them once from the radiant armory at 3-6 Unlike the shadow items, radiant items have no downside, so they are just really, really strong. You also get a divine blessing, and every time you dip below 40 health, you get a divine blessing, which is pretty much just a loot box, and this can contain items, gold, consumables, spatula, and champions. And one thing to know, all players get the same blessing, so if you see someone get a blessing and they get like a very key item that you need, you can consider purposely losing in order to get that blessing if it's going to help your team. I'm not saying to do this all the time, but it is something that you should be considering. Next we have the Tomo Traits, the newest consumable to hit the books, I mean Orb, can allow you to make Viego into a Sentinel or Lucian into a Forgotten. Just imagine where reading can take you. 
at least to the end of this sentence. The tome has a chance of dropping from the divine blessing, but you may also find some books to borrow from PVE encounters. Who knew those Krugs were so literate? The Toma traits can now be sold to bring up a shop of four emblems to choose from. These emblems can be for any trait, including ones that can't be built by spatula. That's just the magic of the book. So essentially what this means is if you get a tome drop, either from the Divine Blessing or from a neutral round, it'll go onto your bench, you throw it into your shop, and then you can choose between different trait items, which are just spatula items. However, you could get stuff that doesn't exist, such as Ranger Spatula or like Brawler Spatula as well, in addition to all the ones that you can already craft. Now onto the system changes, we have loot orbs. So we are removing the four gold low roll start and adding more variety to high rolls with the addition of Toma traits. So the average number of bonus orbs is reduced. Increase small orb value from 2.54 gold to 3, which means that you can't get two gold drops anymore. Small orbs containing two one cost champions is now three one cost champions. One two cost champion is now one two cost champion and one gold. Two gold becomes three gold, and then medium orbs have their value adjusted down a little from 5.72 to 5.6 gold. And medium orbs now have a chance to contain three cost plus two cost drops. And medium orbs containing Nico and a two cost is now Nico, two cost, champ, and one gold. Gold orbs can now drop Toma traits, and gold orbs containing spatula and Nico's help drop rate is reduced slightly. Minimum items received is now 10 components plus one radiant item after the 4 7 raptor round. So it used to be 12, now it is going to be 10 plus a radiant item, so technically it's still 12 if you are counting everything. The armory is also getting a couple of new changes. They're going to be moving around some of the rounds, so we increased the odds of the 4 2 armory to 100%, but pulled back components, but pulled back from 5 2 to compensate. The removal of the components. The removal of components from 5 2 is our way of saying raptors will be the last place to get components. I actually don't like that change. I kind of liked having the option available or the chance available that you kind of have to play around and sometimes you don't really do it. 2-2 two, two armory is now two standard components. 3-2 is moved to 3-6 and now is five radiant items. 4-2 armory is now guaranteed as either two components, three components, or three components plus one special item. 5-2 armory is now less likely and will never contain components and 6-2 and 7-2 are unchanged. Carousel changes. Stage 5 carousel can now sometimes contain componentless emblems. Stage 6 and beyond can now sometimes be all full items. And carousels now sometimes contain componentless emblems. Champion count is a little different. There are now 57 total champions instead of 58 because there's one less 3 cost in this set. Not really sure why they did that. I wonder how they come up with uh, math to figure out how many champions should be in the game. Hyperroll 5 seconds added to the planning phase timers in the following stages 3, 1, 5, 2, 6, 2, and 6, 3. Gold income in stage 7 is now being increased from 6 to 8. Gold income in stage 8 is now 6 to 9. And then 4, 1 armory is likely but not guaranteed and offers either 3 components or 3 components plus 1 special item. 5, 2 is now radiant items. 6, 3 is likely if there is no armory at 4, 1 and has the same offer structure as 4, 1 and other armories are unchanged. Keep in mind this is only for hyperroll so if you only played the regular game, none of these hyperroll changes that we just talked about apply to you. So now on to new champions and traits. So you can click on these sites, or you could check out the video I did on my YouTube channel. I'll try to leave a card for that here. And then we'll go into the Cannoneers. Locked and loaded on every fifth shot, Cannoneer champions deal a percent of that shot's damage in an explosion around the target as physical damage. Here's who's packing the heat. So Senna is a one cost who is also a sentinel. She essentially just throws out a root. Tristana is a tier 2 Hellion and she jumps around the map every time she ults. And then Misfortune is a tier 3 Forgotten. She has her Make It Rain ability from League of Legends, which is just like bullets raining down in a circle. And then Lucian is a tier 4 Sentinel and he is going to be shooting out bullets while dashing around. And these increase based on his attack speed. So if you're doing some sort of Sentinel build, probably makes sense to run both Lucian and Senna. They are missing the Soulbound synergy though. If you guys played Lucian in set 2, you'll know that Lucian and Senna gave a Soulbound synergy, which essentially made them kind of unkillable as long as one of the other person was alive, but they removed that this set, not really too sure why. Now onto Sentinels, this is a 369 synergy. At the start of combat, the Sentinel with the highest health gains a shield that grants attack speed each time it is applied. When the shield is destroyed or expires, it'll pass to the ally with the lowest percent health. Both the shield and the attack speed bonus will increase as you recruit more sentinels. So Olaf is a tier 1 skirmisher. I believe he just gains attack speed based on his health. Senna we already talked about. Aurelia is a tier 2 legionnaire and skirmisher and she like 
puts blades around herself, reducing damage, and then deals damage based on damage taken. Pike is a tier 2 assassin. He's the same old Pike we've seen before. He jumps to the back line and then he jumps across to the furthest enemy and then shoots out a stun to everyone in between the starting and end point. Rakan is a tier 3 renewer. He throws out a heal based on percent missing health. And then Galio is a tier 4 draconic knight. He is going to taunt people around him and then do a burst of damage at the end of the taunt duration. Lucian we already talked about and then Action is a tier 5 ranger. And he's really fun. If you guys saw my set 5.5 preview, you'll see that he jumps around and he pretty much just breaks everyone's ankle spinning around the entire map. Really fun to do. He also reduces people's armor. On to the next one, we have Inanimate. At the start of combat, Inanimate champions summon Hollowed Mist that seeps through their surrounding, one hexes for a few seconds, granting all allies within damage reduction from enemies outside of the mist. And this is going to be Gwen, she is going to be a tier 5 mystic. Essentially, Gwen jumps around and snips people, dealing a bunch of damage and reducing their armor and magic resistance. Victorious is a new trait. This is going to be changed from the God King trait. So when a Victorious champion scores a kill, their next attack is empowered to deal 40% of the target's missing health as bonus damage. And this is going to be Garen, who is a Dawnbringer Knight. We already talked about him before. We've seen him for a whole set already. And then we have Fiddlesticks debuting for the first time in TFT. Fiddlesticks replaces Rise as an Abomination Mystic but also extends the Revenant trait tree. So Fiddlesticks, he just has a surprise party. He jumps in and deals a bunch of AoE damage for his ultimate. Now onto the remove traits. We are going to say goodbye to Verdant, Dragonslayer, God King, and Coven. This is going to be Warwick, Victor, Katarina, Trundle, Pantheon, Mordekaiser, Lissandra, LeBlanc, Morgana, Kindred, Rise, Taric, and Darius. So I'm going to miss Katarina. It makes sense to remove Trundle and Pantheon because they were like... They're such an issue for the whole set, same with Mordekaiser. I'm disappointed that they removed Coven. I felt like there's a lot more potential with this trait. Kindred, I'm gonna miss, but Kindred's a little too splashable in my opinion because she's a mystic and a support unit. Rai's really good for perma CC, he's gonna miss him, but he was a little too broken. Taric, eh. I, I feel like he never got his time to shine because his traits were verdant, so he kind of sucked because of that, but the unit itself was good. And then Darius, because the evil lost Darius is going to be removed. Now onto the trait changes, we have some reworks. The monstrosity is now less of an assassin and more of a beefcake. With shadow items gone, forgotten champions are le more likely to remember victorious combats than old set mechanics. So abominations are being reworked. The monstrosity health and AD increases by 20% each stage, starting from... Abomination 3 at stage 3, Abomination 4 at stage 4, and Abomination 5 at stage 5. Allied death required for the monstrosity to emerge is being changed from 3 to 2, and the monstrosity now deals 150, 200, and 250 magic damage in the area where it stops charging. The monstrosity now also has more lifesteal and no longer scales off of AP. Enraged duration is being changed from 3 to 5 seconds, and then the armor is being reduced. The health is being reduced as well. And then the monstrosity attack damage is being reduced along with the health per level and the attack damage per level. So overall, it's going to be weaker, but it's going to summon sooner, which is very important. And it's going to deal an AoE when it stops charging. Forgotten is now a 2468 synergy, and Forgotten champions now gain bonus attack damage and ability power. Each victorious combat they participate in increases the bonus by 10%, stacking up to 5 times. So this is pretty much just a Warlord trait from set 4, if you guys remember that one. Now onto the adjusted traits. So with traits becoming more difficult or easier to hit at different breaking points, we have to make sure that each trait tier feels as powerful as it is difficult to achieve. For example, Nightbringer 8 is now incredibly hard to hit, requiring what are now componentless emblems, while also losing out on Darius. To match the difficulty of achieving Nightbringer 8, we're making it feel like a true high roll moment by almost doubling its power. TLDR, Nightbringer 8 should feel like a first, but trying to hit it might end up to being too hard to achieve. So Assassin Critical Strike Damage is being buffed, but there's Crit Strike Damage is being adjusted. It's going to be buffed at 2 Assassin, nerfed at 4, and nerfed at 6. 6 Brawler is now added. This is going to be 400, 1000, and 1600. Dawnbringer Max Health Heal is now being changed from 30, 60, 90, and 130% down to 30, 55, 80, and 120%. Dawnbringer Healing Ticks is now being reduced as well, and Dawnbringer damage amp per proc is being reduced so overall a lot of dawnbringer nerfs draconic average value of three trait eggs is being reduced from 3.25 gold to 3.14 draconic average value of five trait golden eggs is now being reduced from 9.25 to 7 gold i believe it's because they are easier to hit now 
Elian is now 2468 with the attack speed change from 5, 30, 75, and 150 percent. Ironclad armor is now being nerfed across the board. Five Mystic is now added with magic resistance being nerfed from 40 to 40, 8, 100 to 80, 200 to 150, and then 250 for five Mystic. Nightbringer shield max health scaling is now being changed. Holy cow. Look at eight Nightbringer. It's going to be 250 now. And then the bonus damage is going to be 80% up from 50%. That is pretty big, but again, it's going to be really hard to hit. Six Ranger is now added. 75, 180, and 400 attack speed. Redeemed armor and AP is being nerfed across the board. Revenant 5 is now added. Revive with 10, 25, 45, or 70% health, taking and dealing 25% more damage upon revival. This is going to be really good on Fiddlesticks, because free GA on Fiddlesticks, holy cow, he's just going to be ulting everyone to death. Skirmisher, max shield, health scaling is now being changed from 25 and 45 to 20 and 40, and buffed at 9 Skirmisher from 75 to 100%. Skirmisher bonus attack damage each second is now being changed as well. 3 Skirmisher is being unchanged at 3 attack damage per second. At 6 Skirmisher it's going to be changed from 6 to 5, and then at 9 it's going to be buffed from 12 to 15. Spellweaver's starting ability power is being changed. It is going to be buffed at 6 Spellweaver from 85% to 100%, and then the Spellweaver ability power per stack is being buffed at 6 from 8 to 10. So, champion changes. Radiant items and the multiplicative tankiness they provide make super tanks Garen, Hecarim, Leona impossible to kill. This hurts the viability of front to back comps and takes too much time out of Earth's day. Expect to see nerfs on many of our tanks below. So Aatrox is being buffed, Leona is being nerfed, Leona Solar Barrier damage reduction is also being nerfed. That's all the tier 1s. On to tier 2, Hecarim's mana is being changed from 4090 to 7125. So this means he's going to get his first cast off at the same time, but his subsequent casts are going to take longer. His Spirit of the Dread damage is being nerfed at 1 star and buffed at 2 and 3 star to compensate, and his healing is going to be normalized at 350. Sejuani is now a brawler in addition to her other traits, so she is a 3 trait person now. So Fury of the North bonus armor and magic resistance is now being nerfed across the board, and Syndra's health is being buffed, Syndra's grab unit with force of will are now untargetable, Syndra's force of will damage is now being nerfed at 1 and 2 star. Varus is being buffed from 550 to 600 health. Now on to tier 3s, with 5 Draconic being easier to hit thanks to Galio, we're shipping nerfs to champions that were already strong before the trait was this easy to play. Nocturne is now the reroll carry for Assassin, with his pals LeBlanc and Katarina now out of the picture. But here's a nice attack speed buff to keep your Blender, Fender, Bender, Offender up and running. So Ash is being nerfed a little bit, Ash's mana is being nerfed too, and then her Enchanted Arrow is also being nerfed because again she's a Draconic. Ash is no longer a Verdant. Lulu's attack speed is being buffed. Nunu's mana adjustment, he's now going to cast his first cast faster, but the later ones are going to be 15 mana later. Zyra grasping roots damage is being nerfed because she's a Draconic, and same with her stun duration. Uh, stun duration is actually probably pretty notable. 0.5 seconds on an AoE stun is actually quite a bit because it hits so many units. Tier 4 Aphelios is now being nerfed by 10. Max mana is being nerfed as well. Let's see what else they change because I thought Aphelios was a little weak towards the end of the set. So Aphelios Dark Vigil attack damage scaling is now, okay, that's why it's being buffed by a lot. So you want attack damage on Aphelios. This is what I'm getting, or this is what I'm seeing because they increased it by a lot. So his Dark Vigil base damage is also being increased and his number of targets is also being increased. So overall, I would say this is a buff because these numbers look a lot better than the old ones. And then Diana health being buffed, Diana attack damage is also being buffed, and same with her attack speed and mana buff. And then her moonfall damage is also being buffed. So Diana's pretty much being buffed all around. And she is also no longer a dragon slayer, so, but she's still slaying. So that makes sense because there's no more dragon slayers because they removed all of them. Trundle and Pantheon and Mordekaiser are gone. So Jax's health is being buffed, and then Karma's soul flare damage is being nerfed at one and two star so this plus all the other dawnbringer nerfs makes me feel like they might have over nerfed it um i was thinking they just nerfed dawnbringer but didn't really touch karma but i guess i was wrong Velkaz is being buffed and then garen is now a victorious instead of a god king garen mana nerf uh, he is <laughs> holy cow 180 mana to cast so not only does his first cast take longer but his second cast probably won't even happen garen god lions justice max health percent damage is now being 
change from 20, 25, 200 to 25, 30, 200%. So it's slight buff there, but doesn't compensate casting so much later. Garen, Garen Godline's Justice Shield is now being buffed as well by 5 and 10% at 1 and 2 star, and then the shield duration is being increased by 1 second. So overall, this is a nerf, I'm pretty sure, because the second, third, and fourth casts are just never going to happen, or it's going to take a very long time for it to. He probably would die before then. Heimerdinger upgrade damage is now being nerfed, so yeah, Heimerdinger does need a nerf, he's way too strong. But it'd be interesting to see how he fits in the new meta, but I guess because he's a Draconic, he needs a nerf as well, because Draconic probably will be a real comp this set, instead of like a gimmick one. Kale Ascension 1 true damage is now being changed from 90, 100, and 1000% to 80, 90, and 1000%, so it's a slight nerf. She is no longer a Verdant, so that is important as well. And then Teemo's starting mana buff, he is now going to start with 30 mana instead of 0, so that's pretty big. And then Teemo's Doppel Hellion can now trigger Cruel's passive. It's a cruel, cruel world. That is what I missed from last set, because I've been in those situations and I'm like, wait a minute, Teemo didn't Cruel the dude, but now he can again, so that's kind of cool. Uh, mana buff, that's pretty big. He's going to cast really, really soon. I wonder why they did that. I think they want like 5 Hellion to be a thing, or 6 Hellion, because I think they changed it, because... No one really played like the deep Hellion traits. They just played like three Hellion and called it a day. So now onto the items. With shadow items gone, we swapped around some of the emblems because it was more fun. Because who doesn't want to see Olaf as a Hellion Cavalier? Hellion can now be made from bow and spatula. This was previously Legionnaire. Cavalier emblem can now be made with a vest and spatula, previously ironclad. I like those two changes because ironclad's kind of boring and then Hellion's much more fun than Legionnaire. Chalice of power, ability of power is being buffed. Dragon Claw is being reworked and now grants 200 bonus magic resist, including the components, and on being hit by magic or true damage from an ability, launch a fireball at the ability's caster that deals magic damage equal to 30% of their max health, and this has a 1 second cooldown. Hand of Justice is being reworked, the holder gains the following 10 AD and 10 AP, and attacks and abilities heal for 10% of the damage dealt. At the start of the planning phase, one of these buffs is increased to 40%, so it's going to be more consistent now, which is definitely very welcome. So now it will always give a little bit of damage or a little bit of healing. Infinity Edge added effect now also grants 10 critical strike damage, and Titan's Resolve is being reworked. Stacks are now granted on attack rather than on crit. Attack damage and ability power per stack is being changed from 3 to 2. Ooh, that's a little weird. I feel like that's a nerf overall. Trap Claw renamed to Banshee's Claw. Banshee's Claw is reworked. When combat begins, the holder and all allies within one hex in the same row gain a shield that blocks the first enemy ability, and it is no longer unique. So I like this. Old Trap Claw, it was very cool as an item, but it was kind of overshadowed by Quicksilver, so I'm glad that it found a new identity now. Zeke's Herald attack speed is now being buffed from 25 to 30%, so all the aura items got buffed, which is pretty interesting. Bug fixes. They now, they got the jump on me. Assassins will now properly jump slightly before other units move. Tastes like fear. Teemo's Doppelhelion can now trigger the cruel trait. Not quite resolute. Fix an issue where Titan's Resolve could lose its stack or stop stacking mid-combat. I did notice that in a couple of my games. Sobriety test. Dragus's Drunken Rage no longer ignores Banshee's Claw. And then now I'm angry. Sejuani's Fury of the North now properly deals damage to units that are CC immune. So that is going to be all the changes for set 5.5. Again, you guys can view a more detailed review if you are curious on what all the champions do, but there are a couple of cheat sheets here. I'll leave a link in the description for, below for this patch. And guys, don't forget about the giveaway. Subscribe and comment below to be entered. And I'll be announcing the winners, I think, on the 22nd is what I said. And let me know what you guys think about this set as well in the comments because... They made a lot of changes to this set, but I do hope that this set is going to be fun and engaging. And I do like Lucian a lot. I feel like he is a cool champion, but I feel like they could have done like a tiny bit extra for this mid set. But let me know your thoughts below, and I'll be coming out with a meta snapshot as I always do every single Friday. And I will follow it up with a couple of comp guides probably on the weekend sometime. Um, but that is going to be it from me. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I will see you guys later.